Hello and welcome to Sofa Now. I'm Kieran Ball. And I'm Daisy Herman. Here's what's coming up on the programme today. The BBC are encouraging better understanding of each other in a fragmented society. Supermarkets are suffering from low stock of hand sanitizer due to fears around the coronavirus. A young woman is becoming Sulphur's next star baker from her kitchen. Today's top story. There are now 90 people with confirmed cases of coronavirus in the UK. The UK Chief Medical Officer is under intense scrutiny today, with reports that the NHS may suffer severe pressure in the event of an epidemic. Locals here in Salford are starting to feel the effects of the virus, and stocks of hand sanitizer in our retail stores are running low. Lee has been gathering information from our local hospitals in afternoon on the rapidly evolving situation. Lee, what have you found out? Well, it's safe to say that we're being told to take caution, that there's now 11 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Greater Manchester, but we can't be too careful. Uh, the Salford Royal Hospital has put up some information on their website uh, addressing anyone who's been to the afflicted countries, so mainland Asia and some parts of Europe, to self-isolate and inform the NHS of anywhere they've been on their travels. Uh, that's only if they've been traveling within the last 14 days though. Uh, everyone else is essentially being told to stay clean, so that can go from anything from just washing your hands to avoiding contact with people who are unwell and using hand sanitizer at any time possible. We spoke to members of the public today about what they think. Uh, Andrew Kananoko reports. Of coronavirus. The coronavirus outbreak as it continues to spread across the UK an emergency meeting on coronavirus. The medical reality of this virus, the economic consequences around the world are huge. Today, the UK hit 90 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. The UK chief medical officer is being grilled by MPs over the way the situation is being handled by the NHS. Here in Salford, many residents are starting to see the effects of the virus starting to hit closer to home, such as healthcare products being increasingly hard to find. Hand sanitizer is starting to fly off the shelves here in Salford, and big brands such as this local Tesco are starting to struggle meeting public demand. But does this truly reflect the worries of the locals? Hand sanitizer, have you stocked up then? No, because I've heard from a biologist friend of mine that it actually doesn't work against viruses. Um, the, only, the only way really that you can, you can avoid it is by washing your hands thoroughly. The coronavirus, are you concerned about it at all? Um, I wasn't at first, but I think it's getting to that stage now where we've got to be very careful. It's, I think there's too many people travelling, maybe unnecessarily. What's your opinion on the coronavirus? Are you concerned? Yeah, very. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's getting out of hand? Do you think the government has it under control? I wouldn't be privy to that information, but uh, yeah, I mean, it seems pretty serious. And... and just as physical stores start to run out of stock, many online retailers are starting to charge sky-high prices. We've logged on here to Amazon to see some of the prices what Amazon is charging for the hand sanitizer. Um, and what we've also found is that even on Amazon, we have results such as this coming up as for 35 pounds. You can get 12 that are 60 milliliters for 85 pounds. So to break it all down, each one would cost seven pounds. Um, and that's just the size of it, it just fits in your hand. And it's not just Amazon either, we've been looking through eBay as well today, and the top two results, one of them, again, the 60 milliliter comes up as £8.50, just for a little travel size one, and as well as this one, for £12 for a little travel size. So clearly, it's not just the big box stores that are charging a lot, it's also these online retailers. In today's society, we can reach anyone anywhere in the world with an easy text or call. Yet even though the world seems smaller, people are still divided by different cultures, viewpoints and opinions. The BBC attempted to tackle these problems by hosting an event to encourage empathy with, between people with opposing views. The event also looked at how to combat both hate online and in the workplace. Our reporter Miles Delahoye attended the Crossing Divides event at Media City. Today's event, Crossing Divides, focused on how we can combat hate in society. Live speakers who have been victim to racism and sexism in the workplace offered their own communication skills that they have picked up to deal with the hate. 
The event was an insightful look at how people in society can deal with opposing views. There are even conversation zones for people attending the debate with opposing views on topics such as Brexit, reparations, tax and social media. So what was the goal of this event? The goal was to help people understand and be heard when facing different opinions. Um, it raises the question on um, what can we do to prevent hate and how can we be more empathetic in society. We have conversations and listen to each other, even if they don't agree. We don't want people to be friends or to agree on everything. It's just about um, learning how to listen to people that have different views from you. And because I think that we've come to such a divisive situation that we don't do that anymore, do we? Really important. I think like just sharing the kind of um, skills that people have in being able to facilitate difficult conversations is really important. Um, I, get, I think it's something that we can kind of take for granted. And a young baker from Eccles is running a successful cake business from her own kitchen. Despite only being open for a year, Abby's kitchen has rapidly grown and she's receiving orders every week. She one day hopes to open her own cafe, sell, cafe selling her creations. Florence Freeman investigates what inspired Abby to start baking. You might find these in any kitchen, but here in Abby's kitchen, she uses her appliances to her own bakery business. Um, so since I was young, I used to bake with my gran and my mum. But then about a year ago is when I started mm -hmm. my business and doing it. Originally planning a career in textiles, a change of career came from a lack of dough. So I was originally going to start a design company. That was my plan. Mm -hmm. Going home from travelling, I was like, right, I'm going to do this. But baking was cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I could afford ingredients and I couldn't afford, like, like at uni I did textiles and print. It's quite expensive, a lot of the equipment and accessories mm -hmm. and stuff you need. So I just found myself wanting to be in the kitchen all the time, just baking with my spare time. Abby's orders are rising, but she wants to grow beyond her own kitchen. I've always really, really wanted a cafe. Mm, so they're okay. quite opposites in terms of like the baking. Cafes yeah. tend to be more like basic, different flavoured cakes. Yeah. And obviously wedding cakes are like really out yeah. there, design wise. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I just like quite like to see it just organically developing and like not a huge menu, just simple menu, good food, amazing cake. <laughs> With the changing face of food, Abby's using her loaf and baking cakes for all tastes. My favourite to bake are the vegan ones. They tend to be a simpler recipe, like with your traditional cakes, it's creaming the butter and sugar for a really long time. And like, you've got to make sure that when you put your eggs in, it doesn't curdle. You yeah. feel that there's quite a lot of steps oh. to do to make it right. Like, don't over whisk your flour, etc. And then vegan cakes feel like it should be so much more difficult because it's this like new thing and it's not real yeah. cake easier, simpler, quicker, mm -hmm. my favourite, yeah. The dead quick, in the oven done. The old saying goes, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and I put that to the test. Wait, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going. <laughs> and now for the weather with Molly Goodwin. If you were up and out early this morning, you'll know it was a frosty start to the day. Well, expect more this evening, with widespread frost and lows of two degrees. Tomorrow you can wake up with some sunshine, but at lunchtime it will change to intermittent clouds. Saturday will be a dry day, but lows of 10 degrees. So if you're off to the Salford City versus Bradford City match, make sure to grab a hot pie to keep warm. On Sunday it'll be wet end to the week. That's all from the weather. Over the past few days, you've been sending in your pictures from around Salford. Here are some of our favourites. Thank you for watching Salford Now. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more updates daily. Goodbye. Goodbye.